2018. Our invocation this evening will be offered by Elizabeth Strobel, pastor of Trinity Presbyterian Church. If you would please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Join me in prayer. Almighty and ever-loving God, we gather this evening in thanksgiving for our city of independence. We pray for all those gathered here, that the leaders of our community would be given your wisdom, your compassion for the needy, confidence in the best choices, and personal joy in the tasks and business conducted in this meeting. Bless our leaders, our citizens, and our future. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam State Clerk, will you please call the roll? Council Members Huff? Here. Perkins? Here. Doherty? Here. DeLucy? Here. Robertson? Here. Van Camp? Here. Mayor Ware? Here. Um, this brings us to our consent agenda. Mayor Pro Tem? I <laughs> recommend that we approve the reports and recommendations of the city manager. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any items any council member wishes to hold for separate consideration? Madam Mayor? Yes, council I'd member. like to have seven, six, eight. Consideration, please. Madam okay. Mayor. Yes. Okay. Uh, Eighteen seven six nine. Okay. Madam Mayor. Uh, yes. Uh, seven six six. Okay. Any others? Okay, Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll on the consent agenda minus resolution 18766, 18768, and 18769. Council Members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Ware? Yes. Council Member Perkins, 18768. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is just a little bit of excitement that we're moving forward in the Inglewood neighborhood with our uh, progress on our CID. We have seven signed petitions now. The City of Independence has acquired the property some months ago of the CMH building and, and uh, have approached the city and Mr. Zach Walker, if approved, would be willing to sign onto the petition, which would allow us to have more property, more assessed value to help move the petition along. We're doing good, We've got seven um, petitions signed. We need a total of nine, so the progress is moving good and I would, um, Appreciate the council's support, and I will call for approval. Make a motion for approval. Second. So moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Uh, council member DeLucy, um, <coughs> number 18769. Madam Mayor, thank you. I had understood that we were going to use the balance of the land at Rockwood as a park. We were going to put in a walking trail. I guess maybe I was confused on that. Are there no plans right now to use anything uh, other than the solar farm? Mr. City Manager? Our agreement right now, Madam Mayor, members of the council, uh, requires MC Power to, uh, well, they, they are leasing 29 of those acres from the city for a 30-year term. Uh, to put up the solar capacity there, uh, eight and a half megawatts. Um, there was some landscape buffer requirements. There were some other, um, you know, in, in conformance with the UDO, some of those requirements. But the the walking trail that the councilman is referencing is something that was discussed but never um, uh, adopted as part of any formal agreement. I think that's certainly something that the council and the neighborhoods expressed an interest in, but nothing that we've uh, formally signed on to. Or, or requiring of uh, MC Power, our development partner, for that particular part of the project. Okay. 
other than some enhancements surrounding the the immediate the portion of the, the outside portion of the solar of farm, the correct? Solar panels, mm -hmm. uh, yes, ma'am. Which I know that they have done some landscaping and some other things. Correct. Over there, which is struggling to stay alive in this hot weather. Like right? most of us, yes. <laughs> yes, um, Council Member, I was going to, I was going to also pull this uh, for separate consideration. Um, we have um, had some in preliminary discussions about some exploring some potential uses for the remaining um, acreage at Rockwood Golf Course. Um, they could in, that could include a variety of different things, including um, residential retail, park amenities, a number of things. So I was going to pull this and ask for it to be postponed for until August 6th, I think, with the summer schedules, um, council members, um, particularly the fourth district councilman, um, may need a little more time to kind of understand what we are, what may be proposed. This is a, certainly not a development agreement of any way, shape, or form, but an engagement um, to explore what the potential opportunities are for the remaining acreage of Rockwood Golf Course. Um, so I was going to recommend that we um, spend a little more time with the city manager, have him explain what the preliminary discussions have been, mm -hmm. which have included also um, Mark Randall and Independence Power and Light and our other utilities. So if that would be agreeable to you, I would recommend that we postpone this till August 6th and gather some more information before we uh, make this allocation. I agree, um, Madam Mayor. I would suggest that we also ask the neighborhood what their vision is. And I would ask the law department to take a look at the contract because the contract that I looked at attached to this calls for a lump sum payment of $50,000. And I'm not in favor of any lump sum payment that will take half of our council goals. So I would move that we postpone 18769 until August 6th. Okay. Is there a second? Uh, okay. The discussion. Yes. <laughs> All right. I, uh, I'm in discuss in negotiations or discussing with MC Power where to go, and w as long as we all get on the same boat, mm -hmm. we're not saying that it's locked into anything at this time. Uh, this was a little cart before the horse deal, and uh, we're actually going to get together and we're going to look at this. Uh, the opportunities there cannot be confined by what we have now. We have to be open-minded and see what else is there. And I think putting this off so that the council can better understand where the goals are and where to have it is a great idea. Um, I would just also um, add that um, the professional services that we would potentially engage to help us to determine what the options are for that property is going to include community engagement. No matter what we do, there will be, as always, uh, community engagement with the neighborhood um, before we make any determination of any development plan. Um, yes. Yeah, I walked that precinct on uh, Saturday. Uh, I went around there and, and got the feel of what they want. Yeah. So uh, we're having the ribbon cutting tomorrow. You're all welcome. 10 o'clock. Yeah. <clears throat> hey. Mayor, can I yes. make a comment too? Uh -huh. um, I guess two of my concerns are, are number one, spending half of the council goal funds the first month of the fiscal year and not having a significant amount in there for the rest of the year for things that might come up. I mean, budget-wise, I don't think it's a good idea, and it's, it doesn't rise, at least in my opinion, to the level of priority to spend the mo that much money at the very beginning of our fiscal year. I know we spent most of our money in the council goal funds last year for demolition of, of dangerous buildings, uh, but there's a number of other things that are likely to come up during the year. And so I would hesitate to spend that kind of money at the beginning. Um, the second thing is, as I recall from some of the discussions about Rockwood, I know we had talked uh, about the possibility of some retail or some office space down there toward Westport Road. 
<clears throat> but we had also talked about the possibility that there may be more desire for more solar. And I would hate for us to spend money uh, if we're going to do something else in the next few years. And so we discussed at the time of mowing most of the remaining um, green space. And I think at that time, at least if my memory's correct, it was around $30,000 a year for uh, Parks and Rec to maintain and just mow that space the way it is, to leave it the way it is. So um, I think, and Eric's not here, at least I don't see him tonight. Oh, here he, he is here. <laughs> but I, I believe that's what had originally been discussed when we talked about buying Rockwood <laughs> and developing Rockwood. I, until we found a more suitable purpose okay. for the remaining land, so. Okay, I mean, this is a topic that I have been engaged in since I was elected to the 4th District City Council. Council Midori and I came on the council at the same time. Um, this is a ongoing discussion with the neighborhood regarding Rockwood Golf Course and, uh, you know, over time discussions with the Independent School District. So. If anybody has an understanding of what we thought that this was going to be, that is news to me. I think that this is, um, what we are proposing here is um, to engage professional services to give us an opportunity to look at our options. Um, there's certainly in my and Councilman Van Camp's frequent engagement with people who live in this neighborhood um, no promises may, have ever been made about what Rockwood would be. I think that we are maybe um, jumping to some conclusions and before we engage professionals, potentially engage some professional services to vet out what all of our options may be for um, solar, for retail, for office, for, you know, on and on, things that we can't imagine. So I would just caution that we don't make assumptions about what the neighborhood expectations are or what the council had expected this to be. This is why we're recommend, the recommendation is being made to engage professional services to vet out all of our options and make the best decisions for Rockwood. Councilman? Uh, and not to, I mean, we, we need further discussion, but you're right, I did keep your mind open. Don't say, you know, what we got in a box. But, this is a fine company, and uh, this, these people are international, and uh, they're not doing this for anything but this city. The, the person who owns that is a local boy, and this is, this is their opportunity if and when the council decides to go that way. But no set boundaries have been made, just as the mayor said. Okay, is there any other discussion? Uh, hearing none, please call the roll on the motion to postpone to August 6th. Council members have? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. Lucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Um, Councilman Robertson, 18766. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, when we voted on this uh, a month or so ago, um, maybe it's been two months now, but I probably did not vet this or look at it closely enough and after having a number of phone calls, I'm sure the rest of the council has had several as well. Um, I realized that with the, the city's seal on their mailings for solicitation for insurance, and I know they're insuring the line from the city service into the house, um, but just for sewer and water. Um, it seems to me that, that there is some concern on our part, on my part at least, for the liability for the city as, as well as uh, the money that we're getting paid. We're getting paid a very small amount if someone does take out the policy. And I, I feel like we shouldn't be in that business of uh, promoting one particular company over any others because most of the other mainline insurance companies now are, are offering the same type of um, coverage if you have homeowners. So I'm, I'm requesting that we rescind um, or repeal, I guess, uh, the city's agreement. Um, so I, I would move that we do that. Is there a second? Hearing 
No second. Motion dies. Motion dies. So the item's still up. Okay. So now do we make an a No, I would like to no the motion dies for lack of a second, but I would like to councilman um, just provide you with a little bit more background potentially. Mark, when did you come to remind me when you came to independence because that will help rem me remember the timeline. Um, the National League of Cities came to Independence and met with me to talk about the service line warranty program, and I remember it because it was right as um, we, that the same manager had hired Mark, Mark Randall, and they had this program in Pleasant Hill, and I thought, well, this will be great. Mark Randall has experience with this, and when he gets here, will be able to advise us. Um, at that time, we decided not to move forward with it because of the reasons that you stated, Councilman, that it, it seemed that you, we were endorsing a particular um, program over another. Um, from then, the conversation did um, take place at the MML uh, board meeting, um, which I serve, I represent our city on the MML board, and it um, was discussed at length at several MML board members meetings whether or not the league should uh, support this program. So, you know, all the things that you mentioned, you know, certainly did go into our thinking before this was brought forward to the council. It was um, supported by the National League of Cities and by the Missouri Municipal League. There's many cities around the state that, that use this program. So, um, Mr. C. Manager, would you just I, to be honest, I have not received any calls about this other than people asking, this came in the mail, is this legit or is this a scam? I say no, it's legit. Um, and no other you know, comments um, you know, in, for or against the program. Um, so can you just kind of explain a, in greater detail how we came to this decision and why they're entitled to use the city logo? Sure. Um, as the mayor mentioned, National League of Cities, which is really the federal version of our Missouri Municipal League that I think we're all familiar with, a conglomerate of um, um, cities across the, the nation, uh, has started this program because really we are like every other city, that the service line between the water main and the property owner's home is the responsibility of the property owner. And uh, of course, homeowners insurances through various agencies, you know, carry these type, types of program. But National League of Cities has started a partnership endorsing this particular firm as a, uh, a way of saying, Here, here's a legitimate business that's coming to do this. Um, for the very reasons the mayor just mentioned, the firm that we are working with uh, has requested to use city's logos. Um, you know, Kansas City, our neighboring city, I know is also a member of this program. They, they request to do that to try to add some legitimacy to it and to try to uh, promote to the property owner or the homeowner. We are a legitimate firm. The city's aware that we're doing business here. We've been authorized to conduct this business in the city because it's, you know, it really isn't typical that a insurance firm would be out there marketing directly to you. So it's a way to add credibility and credence to them. So that's why they've been allowed to use that. That was part of the original agreement and the program that the council endorsed a few months ago. Uh, forget the exact date of when that happened. But um, yeah, this is, a, this is the preferred vendor, if you will, of the National League of Cities in a program I think about 270 cities or so across the country are participating in at this time. And private insurance, com insurance companies can also offer this service. So if the Correct. And they do. chose to just go to their, you know, who they use for their homeowners insurance, yes. then that yes. doesn't preclude that. Correct. They, they. I, I'm, you know, obviously not familiar with all the different insurance yeah. policies, but yeah, many of the private ones do offer it as part of a homeowner's policy program. Okay. Very good. Okay. This takes us to. Oh, okay. Then we would need a. a slide. Excuse me. <laughs> a motion to uh, postpone 18766 indefinitely. Second. Oh, we need a well, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we postpone it indefinitely. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Madam Mayor. Yes. For, just 
point of my clarification, postpone or we postponing the, the warranty program? No, no, no. It's the motion to okay. um, the pilot. to terminate the agreement. Gotcha. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still confused. <laughs> so, Ma'am Sickler, why don't yes. you just the so, procedure? I'm sorry. So, since we have this bill on on our agenda, we have to address it somehow. We did, our first motion to approve was not seconded, so we have a motion now on the floor to postpone indefinitely, which would essentially kill the bill. Thank you. One of the concerns I had that we haven't really addressed yet is if we was to kill this if we would have killed this tonight or rescinded it do they have to give all the money back to the people who have already bought it or do they not have insurance anymore or does they decide that they don't want to do this and you know then it becomes invalid but it's it's a year-to-year -year contract I understand and then when it comes back up then we can decide whether or not we want to renew it then just for information mm -hmm. They can continue to sell in the city of Independence, and all the contracts that are in existence can continue indefinitely. But could they, uh, a question, could they, because we have not sanctioned them, decide that there would be some retribution on the policies or something of this no. nature? Okay. No. And, and my concern was that AMBES, who rates companies, this mm -hmm. was not rated as high as a number of other companies. Yeah, so and I think if you're prudent, you would look at the rates and then call your insurance guy up and say, hey, is this something, I, you know, I think I would think that a prudent homeowner would get a second opinion on, hey, do I need this and what my rates would be. Maybe shop it around, like car insurance, shop it around maybe. So. Okay. Mr. Thanks. Perhaps Mark, we yeah, we could ask uh, Assistant City Manager Mark Randall just to come up and clarify. He's worked directly with the service vendor. Identified him as the expert on the topic. Right? Okay. <laughs> Mark Randall, Assistant City Manager. Uh, the way I understand it is that those who have already bought policies, and I think a hundred, a little over a hundred have been purchased already, they would get to keep those policies as long as they wanted to have them, but they would cease selling policies without the city's consent. Because the way this program works, they don't, unlike other programs, they don't operate in the city unless the city gives consent and endorsement. Okay, thank you. Okay, so there is a motion and a second um, to postpone it indefinitely. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? No. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Uh, motion passes. Okay, this takes us to our non ordinance action item. Madam City Clerk. Council action is requested on the application to transfer the existing restaurant bar intoxicating liquor by the drink and Sunday sales license from Cheddar's Kansas City JV LLC to Cheddar's Casual Cafe Incorporated for Cheddar's Scratch Kitchen number 2905 located at 4675 South Bass Pro Drive. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Item passes. Let's take this to our second reading. Bill number 18-056, an ordinance authorizing acceptance of the 2018 Midwest High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Memorandum of Understanding for the Investigative Support Center Initiative and related documents with the Kansas Bureau of Investigation for a grant award in the amount of $67,244, making the necessary appropriations, authorizing future change orders for additional funding and or time extensions, and authorizing certain future appropriations. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Bill number 18-057, an ordinance authorizing the congestion, mitigation, and air quality agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for the Independence Operation Green Light Traffic Controllers Project, number 7011704, second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir. Yes. Ordinance passes. 
Bill number 18-058, an ordinance amending Article 18 of Chapter 5 of the Independent City Code dissolving the License Surcharge Annual Review Committee and empowering the Street Improvement Oversight Committee to monitor the license surcharge and make recommendations annually to the City Council. Second and final reading. Um, Mr. City Manager, um, we're making a number of changes to boards and commissions, so can you just um, give a little reminder on on the action that this is taking this evening? Sure, I, I believe the council's identified their intent um, with their various boards and commissions that the ones where we're either having a very difficult time finding interested volunteers or the ones that have a duplication of purpose with another board or commission to try to consolidate those for efficiency's sake. In this case, there's really a duplication of purpose. The street oversight committee uh, and the license surcharge are both seeing public funds that are used to keep our infrastructure, our streets, sidewalks, bridges, et cetera. So uh, I know Councilman DeLucy is a representative on the license surcharge committee. They're meeting once a year. Uh, blending it with the uh, street sales tax committee makes a lot of sense to make sure those funds are used in a consistent way with what the council's trying to achieve through the strategic plan. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Bill number 18-059, an ordinance finding, determining, and declaring the necessity of acquiring general utility easements and temporary construction and grading easements for the Sugar Creek Neighborhood Stormwater Improvements Project, number 7013503, authorizing the negotiation and imminent domain proceedings if necessary, approving the plans and specifications for the project, authorizing the use of experts as needed, authorizing and directing the execution of documents and the payment of funds to property owners or others holding property rights in conjunction with the project. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Bill number 18-060, an ordinance amending Chapter 4 of the Code of the City of Independence, Missouri to require a low voltage electric permit. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this Madam, bill? Madam Mayor. Yes, Council Member DeLucy. I'd like a definition of what a low voltage electric permit would cost, what it would be required for, what other cities have this in the area? Why are we doing this now? Mr. State Manager. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, I'll ask Community Development Director Tom Scannell to come forward and provide as much of that information as we can. Mayor, members of the council, Tom Scannell, Community Development Director. Um, First question that uh, Councilmember DeLuzzi had asked as far as uh, what these permits cost. Uh, our permit fees are, are based on the value of, of the work. Uh, so, so the uh, minimum permit fee is $45 and it goes up, up from there. Again, it's just based on the, the, the value of, of the work. I'm sorry, Tom, I heard $45 was the floor. What was the ceiling? There is no ceiling because it's just based on the value of, of the work. Um, okay. But a typical um, electrical permit uh, in a residential ap application, you're probably looking uh, more on the lower end. On the commercial side, that's where you'll, you will get at the, the, the bigger dollars. And this ordinance would apply towards residential and commercial? Correct. Uh, the, the low voltage lighting, uh, the ordinance that is written would apply both to residential and to commercial. If I want to put in one of those doorbells that have the camera attached to it that would allow me to see who's at my front door, do I need a permit today to put that in? No, you do not. And If this passes, will I need a permit? No, you would not because it's not meeting the definition of um, the low voltage um, or the amendments that were that were made at the last council meeting. I'm confused. 
So we've already passed something regarding this ordinance? No, we, at the last council meeting, we, there were some amendments made. If you, to the general electrical code. No, 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 two, two different things. Let me have you're, you're, talk, you're talking about two different things. Um, first of all, uh, the electrical, the National Electric Code is the is the big one that's for first responders. It's when the firemen and the police and everybody's out here that have a chance to get electrocuted because we have nothing in the old uh, NEC for solar panels and stuff like that. So as time moves on, we need to move up with that. This is part of that, but there's no enforcement in here. Um, all the other electric uh, things require a permit other than this low voltage thing. If you ever pushed up on these panels and these, you know, it's mostly after the, um, and back up, it's mostly after the commercial. You push up these panels and there's wires going everywhere, nothing's identified. You don't know one from another. Uh, it's quite a mess up there. And this is one of the only things that we have left that's not even, it's not permitted, not inspected. Um, <clears throat> when there's shabby work, we don't know who did the work. We have no idea. Uh, like I said, it's mostly after the commercial end, not the residential. Most residential, like their alarms now, are all wireless. Just like the doorbell, it's wireless. Uh, we're not after Malibu lights and stuff like that. It's, uh, this is mostly for the commercial end. So, Tom, as a homeowner, when would I need to get this permit? What you need to do to get the permit? Just go up to the counter like another, like any other. I think what she's asking is what type of work at a oh. home would require a permit like this to be obtained is that what you're asking council member it is and i yeah. i directed it to mr scannell i'm sorry okay. i'm not clear on your question so council i member. think the, I, the question why is, would i need this permit as a homeowner you if you what would be a scenario of a low voltage installation that you would have to acquire a permit to install what smoke detector doorbell I mean, alarm system what is the a typical give us an example of the type of work that a homeowner may be doing that would require this type of a permit in our in our read of this ordinance it would be the uh, outside landscape lighting that was really the only thing that we could conceive that would apply to this uh, ordinance change okay that's why, I mean, obviously it's wired. Correct. Yes. Do other cities in our area have this, Mr. Scannell? We did not find any of uh, other cities in the metro that have this permit. <clears throat> Kansas City does, and so does uh, BPU. Kansas City proper does. They do have that. Sorry. To clarify this, for instance, the hospital is doing a huge addition, miles and miles of low voltage cables being installed to heart monitors, x-ray machines, all sorts of digital equipment with no requirements to the installation, no requirements to the qualification of the installer, and no fee picked up by the city. This would fix that. One of the things we also heard when the police chief came up and we went to a third party alarm monitoring company to monitor false alarms, is one of the big problems they had, over 50% of their calls were false alarms due to faulty installs of the low voltage equipment. Also, when they put an alarm in, they're supposed, the company's supposed to do it, who's not licensed, not qualified, is supposed to alert the police station to the address that the alarm went in. That never happens. With this, we would pick up a small fee, we would see to it that the installer was qualified. They would then have to notify the police department the alarm was installed at that address. And if we had, we had a constant amount of false alarms could be attributed to a, per, a poor installer, we could handle it that way. So miles and miles of digital cable are put in without any inspections, no qualifications or licensings by the contractor passed a business license. So that would help us in those ways, is one of the, was one of the intents, of many intents of this. Thank you. Okay. Any Mayor. other comments or questions? Yes, Councilman Robertson. I'm sorry. Um, DeLucy and I had been asked to meet with, uh, I guess, the fellow that, that helped write this or put it together, and we did. We had a meeting, what, a week or so ago. 
Karen, and, and so there were a number of questions that we asked, a um, couple that I asked, I've never heard back from him, I've never gotten any, any uh, answers. So one of those questions has to do, has anyone been hurt by low voltage systems? Any firefighter, IPL inspector, any citizen? Has there been any reports of anybody shocked or hurt? That's, yeah. that's being addressed in that other one. That's, it's that's in the right. National Electric Code 2018, which we're still at 2011. That's addressed there as the first responders and stuff. This has nothing to do with first responders or being shocked well, sure it or is. anything. Sure. If they were up there with a solar panel or something, has anybody been hurt? That's, well, that's not low voltage. That's, that's high voltage. You just, you just said under, they were. Under 50 volts. No, I said the National Electric Code yes. 2018 is... They're looking at changing it before the end of the year. Okay. This is in that, but there's no enforcement of this. This is low voltage. It has nothing to do with solar panels. It has nothing to do. It's basically alarms, smoke, stuff like that. Um, okay. It's mostly with the commercial buildings out here where they're just slinging this stuff everywhere. Computer data. The, the way this is written, and, and we talked about this with the fella uh, at length, and it's very confusing the way it's written. And so to enforce it, and to make people be able to understand what we're requiring, I think it needs to be needs to be rewritten. And we asked him. We said, "Are there are, are there some of these things that don't make sense?" Who are you referring to? Um, his name is Austin Rice. Okay. We met with Austin Rice, and we asked him some of these questions. And and we said, "Are there problems with the way it's written?" He said, "Yes, there are problems." I said, "Well, shouldn't we fix those before we pass an ordinance?" You have to do that. The national with the national, it's not nothing to do with the city. This is, this is taken out of the national code. We're just incorporating it in the city with a permit. Well, shouldn't we improve on it if it's not understandable though, Mike? Shouldn't we, shouldn't well, we I mean, rewrite we it? We forever and never approve a national code, but I mean, we get somebody electrocuted out there on a solar panel, then we'll might think a little different about that. You said this doesn't apply to solar panels. You're, you're confusing two different things here. I'm talking about this ordinance. I'm, I'm only speaking to this ordinance, okay. so. If I may, Mr. City Manager, I do think we have some confusion because there were two things that were brought forward at a previous meeting. This, and then the adoption of the National Electrical Code. Um, and as we um, had that discussion, of course, Councilman Huff and Councilman Doherty have a lot of experience and knowledge about the electrical industry, so we, for the rest of us, were a little bit um, lost, <laughs> I, I would say. So would you just please, um, to clarify that, this or what we are being asked for in tonight's um, ordinance, and then we, the, the National Electric Code goes out for 90 days for public comment. So that's a separate issue, and that's the one that deals with the higher voltage solar panels and the public safety concerns that Councilman Huff is referencing. So can you just remind us of where we are with both of those. Right, and I'm gonna ask Mr. Scannell to back yeah. me up if I misstep here, but it's my understanding that our staff is, is responding to two different issues right now. We are working through the National Electric Code, which that is an industry standard where there's national fire codes, plumbing codes, mechanical codes, there's codes for days. We are working on upgrading the National Electric Code to the 2018 version that has come out, and staff probably plans to bring that forward sometime this fall, October or somewhere in there. This is in response to Councilmember Huff's is a desire to have a low voltage permit requirement, which presently is not a requirement in city code. So this is a limited part of an overall electrical code, but separate and apart from the grander, larger National Electric Code upgrade. So if memory serves me correctly, um, if we just didn't do this and waited for the National Electric Code to be adopted after the 90 day public um, comment period, would it, would this be adopted as part of that, should the council choose that? Yes. Okay, so we can do it now, or we can wait and do it, potentially do it later, but one way or the other, if one or both of these adoptions of code are accepted by the council, 
we're going to achieve the same thing. I do want to clarify right? with because I don't know I'm not as familiar yet because staff's still working internally right. on it with the specificity of the National Electric Code so I don't know if this is the exact provision that's being contemplated as part of the 2018 national standard. I'd have to ask Tom if there's any nuances as part of that. Okay, I do remember to I'm sorry um, that when Councilman Huff brought this forward there were some specific additions that he asked to be included that go above and beyond what are included in the National Electric Code, which is why we're considering them separately. Is that right? Correct? This this is in the National Code. This okay. is, this actual all these phrases, these mm -hmm. chapters, or articles are in there. What I'm saying is or asking for is that we make a permit with these four items, these four articles, so we can enforce the National Electric Code. That's all this is. It has nothing other than that. Austin Rice is an employee of Independence Power and Light. Okay. I mean, just as the councilman said that they, like to that they have met with him, and I just wanted, and I was, I, I'm not sure what his responsibilities, who he is, what his responsibilities are with the, with the, um, with the city. Sure, I, and I confess I was absent from the last meeting, but it's my understanding there was some specific questions after the first reading of this ordinance, and um, Mr. Rice was brought in to provide some background for the council members on those matters who okay. had requested that. Very good. Okay, thank you. So anyway, <laughs> I hope that that clears that There's up, that we are, this ordinance does not deal with some of the solar panels and the other higher voltage things. So I didn't mean to interrupt the discussion, but I wanted to make sure that we know what we're, um, what we're being asked for this evening. Any other? Comments or I have another question. Yes. Councilwoman. I do I've read the ordinance and I don't see how this is going to help in the enforcement of anything other than forcing people to get another permit for a minimum of forty five dollars or above. Independence already has the reputation of being a difficult city to deal with. I don't see a reason for doing this tonight or even in 90 days. Okay, is there any other discussion? I have another question yes. too. So in 90 days, if, when this uh, takes effect with all the rest of the electrical code. Um, no, Councilman, I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> this is not the one that's out for the 90 day public review that's the national electric code that's separate from, from so that's separate ordinance. from this none of this is in the national electric code. this is in the national electric code but it's going to add this is for a permit to enforce right. the national electric code it's all in there right okay it's just not enforced so but when that goes into effect don't you have to get a permit for an electrical job that's done electrical you do but not yeah. low voltage that's, but that's not is. that's not part of a, a permit that's in 90 days this will be part of it so won't that no, be included in a permit you, a city doesn't you don't have to have a permit for anything if you don't want to the city is the one that comes up with the permits you can run with the national code but if no one's enforcing it it's not doing you any good where this is giving you some teeth you ever been in one of these buildings and you probably go in your own place and raise one of them panels and see all them wires and you try to identify what's up there that's all this is doing is making them have a little uh, inspection and make sure this is Label just like you go to your breaker panel in your house and this garage kitchen same thing here Just telling you what the wires and where they're going now the, the uh, State statutes and are, are overriding as far as solar in fact my solar was installed according to state statutes Those were written about ten years ago now, and they probably have been updated, but I would think that those state statutes uh, maybe override what we did as a city back then and so mine were installed according to the state code. Um, I guess this is, this is confusing enough to read for me. And, and like the Lucy said, getting another permit, I mean, we're talking another hurdle, another hoop for people to jump through. I have no problem doing that with commercial, but when it comes to residential or small offices, I mean, it's just an extra burden and it creates an, an, another uh, obstacle for people to come to this city. And I, I certainly don't want to do that to inhibit businesses coming to this city. So. 
Any further discussion? Yes. You know, we don't need to get in the technicalities because obviously there's people here that, that don't understand it and will never understand it. This is to license contractors to ensure a quality install. You lift up a ceiling tile in this building, there's miles of that blue cable up there. Did you know there's two different types of compound of the plastic and it looks the same? One puts off deadly gas when it burns, one doesn't. One's rated to be above the suspended ceiling, which is actually a return air duct, some are not. If these contractors use shoddy workmen and there's no inspection, you could have a dangerous situation in a situation of fire. Now this is low voltage, no one gets shocked. But there's a lot of different reasons that we need to control commercial contractors that put in miles of this cable and do a shoddy job. This is not to license a residential person to put a doorbell in. The thing that the residential person would make sure is the creep that comes and puts the alarm in for $99 knows what he's doing. That's it. The commercial guy is used to paying money for permits and this is nothing to them. So this would assure our large commercial installations to be done correctly. That's the bulk of this. It's not the homeowner that puts a doorbell in. Okay, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? No. Robertson? No. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes, ordinance passes. Uh, this takes us to our first reading. These will have their second reading on Monday, August 6th. We have five Mondays this month, so we will meet again on August 6th. And we have one emergency ordinance this evening. Madam State Clerk. Bill number 18-061, an ordinance finding, determining, and declaring the necessity of acquiring gen general utility easements and temporary construction and grading easements for the 9th and Winter Stormwater Improvements Project, number 9814, authorizing the negotiation and eminent domain proceedings if necessary, approving the plans and specifications for the project, authorizing the use of experts as needed, authorizing and directing the execution of documents and the payment of funds to property un owners or others holding property rights in conjunction with the project. Bill number 18-062, an ordinance amending Article 2 and Article 10 of Chapter 4 of the Independent City Code, dissolving the Contractor Licensing Review Board and empowering the Board of Engineering Appeals to review all contested matters pertaining to the approval, issuance, suspension, revocation, renewal, and reinstatement of contractor licenses, including examinations, and repealing all conflicting provisions of Ordinance Numbers 4614, 5430, 8257, 14007, 15183, and 15934. Bill number 18, this is our emergency reading is next. Eight, bill number 18-503, an ordinance amending and extending the work agreement with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, local number 53, for maintenance and clerical workers effective through June 30th, 2021, with wages retroactive to July 1, 2018, and declaring emergency. Bill number 18-503, an ordinance amending, amending and extending the work agreement with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, local number 53, for maintenance and clerical workers effective through June 30th, 2021, with wages retroactive to July 1st, 2018, and declaring an emergency. Second final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Uh, this takes us to council member comments. Uh, I will start uh, with council member <coughs> uh, Nothing, Madam Mayor. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Council member Dorian. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You know, I've been thinking we're going to look and have some of those uh, AMI vendors come back and give us a quick presentation to the council. I was thinking what we what we ought to think about is maybe uh, getting a form the staff can make a little form up that's got the name of all the vendors on it and maybe we could put some of the criteria that we're looking for and maybe assign a rating you know one to five five to ten or something like that maybe on on the safety of it how we rate the safety of it or or their performance of it uh, maybe their installing schedule uh, whether or not they're going to use a regional workforce or bring them in from out of town pricing uh, even ask the PA, PUAB board, what's going to be there that same night, if they would like to get a form and maybe just 
Uh, we would just jot down as we go through the different vendors some of the points that we thought were important to us and how they rated with us and it gave us an idea how we can evaluate these and see if the city manager can maybe get the staff to give us a list of the present presenters and maybe some of the criteria that we'd heard the public said that they were interested in too and then we could rate what we thought the presentator the presentation would you know afford us is how we you know would look at it okay. something like that that's but otherwise that's all i've got thank you Councilmember Perkins. thank you madam mayor you kind of stay with with the that kind of train of thought uh mr city manager a couple of weeks ago our last business meeting uh, assistant manager palmer was was talking to the council about um ipl looking at possible cost savings and some of the different measures and stuff there um, is there any new information that uh, your office has received that we can move forward and take a look at whatever those potential savings may be? Yeah, um, as you know, the council a few weeks ago, um, or I, I guess close to a month ago, approved a change uh, that's allowed by the city charter to allow Mark Randall to serve as the director of public utilities. And following the council's discussion on the nights of the 18th and then the 25th, uh, really was clear with the direction that council wants to see us getting some of those personnel costs long-term costs contained to you know without compromising you know our ability to provide services so uh, Mark and his team have worked really hard on that um, we have a draft of a memo that I'm still finalizing a review on and I can get that to the council um, but we, we have taken a close look at several things what are the existing vacant positions that um, we feel like we can um, um, eliminate that would save uh, funds for the city but longer range we've got a couple of as we talked some of these pending projects that could certainly impact long-range staffing as well too um, as we you know have retirements or staff turnovers you know things like this AMI issue the energy master plan etc so those are longer term out, but there are some immediate term savings that staff sees, and I think we'll have a memo to the council very soon explaining what that looks like and begin that implementation plan of taking a, a hard look at some of those vacant positions. In addition to your memo, that would, if, as we look through that, that would, would that be something the council would have to amend the budget for? Would that be brought for us for amendment? These, these would simply be an uh, administrative fix, council member, of eliminating some vacant positions. And then um, when we bring forward the, the new TO at some point, we would just show those positions as being formally eliminated from our table of organization. That's what TO stands for. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I have nothing. <clears throat> Councilman Robertson. Nothing tonight. Thanks, Mayor. Councilman Van Camp. Yes, I'd like to invite everybody to the ribbon cutting tomorrow at Rockwood. We're going to go with phase two, which gives us uh, for our green city uh, goal, 11.5 megawatts of solar. And I uh, hope to see three coming around here sometime. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Andrew, this a couple of updates, Mayor and Council, that I think are appropriate for this forum. Um, project staff's been working on the direction of the Council. A few weeks ago, you passed a resolution asking us to report back to you on the feasibility of installing some message boards to uh, bring awareness to community events, both here at City Hall and the new Independence Utility Center. We've solicited some uh, quotes from different vendors, several different vendors. Our rec I mean, the cost on that, let me tell you, ranges anywhere from 17000 up to 65000 and that's parts, labor, materials, installation, all-in cost on that. We're recommending as staff that we go ahead and wait for the branding survey to be completed so that we can have consistency of messaging with these boards. Um, but I, I think we found the price to be attractive. We just need to make sure that we, we take advantage of our new branding study to get that implemented. Council directed us uh, some time ago last fall to take a look at creating a downtown redevelopment coordinating committee. That committee looked at 16 different plans that have been formed over the years. That committee will be hearing a, a final presentation of the draft report this Thursday, so we should have a final report to the council later this fall in accordance with the resolution there. Um, and I wonder, last week we heard the energy master plan sneak peek, I call it. The formal final presentation from Burns and McDonald will be August 27th. Uh, so council will have that under your nose here within about a month. So a couple updates on some major projects we've been talking about. And other than that, I have nothing else tonight. Okay, we are adjourned.